Preservation. Today, more than ever, an endless variety of preserved food imported from all over the world is available to consumers. Yet, as rich as we are to diversify taste, we are equally poor in the knowledge of traditional food preservation and its techniques in our own backyard. Preservation has been around since time immemorial. For most of the methods here in Sarawak, Borneo, preparation is determined by the weather and geographical location. From the highland to the sea and the jungle to the river, this culinary wisdom stems from oral history. The custom to keep food from spoilage and to extend shelf life of one's harvest has been passed down for generations. In Search of the Food Preservers covers the cross-pollination of the multicultural palates of its people, which is the epitome of Sarawak's food heritage. Most significantly, it's the cooking process strictly acquired by instinct that is truly at risk of getting lost and forgotten. Six food preservers, six indigenous groups, and six traditional methods. And I'm obsessed with documenting and preserving our culinary culture. Preservation through sunning is one of the oldest methods. In this episode, we are so privileged to meet with a living legend who started this 40 years ago. their gods to have a better day. It's going to be like machines right up to the ceiling. But it really wasn't walk through a kitchen, a hallway. Suddenly, there is this like a wide open space. It had a roof that was a see-through roof to have maximum sunlight. That was the sun room for the purple. And there were trays on wheels of this little pieces of to be able to ride. And I believe they take it in and out. If it was bad weather, they would not put out because of the humidity. And we saw the wet, the dry ones. And then we saw all the eight different types of crop up. Uh, stand up, okay. The process of making crop up, it seems to be something that we don't attempt to do anymore because it's easily available. Thank you for showing us how you did it at the beginning. That was by your parents and we really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Let's talk about the prawns. Get the good prawns. So these are the peeled ones yeah. that your daughter and sister-in-law yeah. were peeling. So it's a big family business. Do you remember the first time you had to help your parents, both of you? I think when we are studying primary school. Yeah, I mix it, yeah. So what is this? Uh, what are you going to do now? Mix it with some flour, black pepper, 
and mixing it. I remember as a child, my mother showed me how to do that. And the part that was difficult was the pounding because if it is not pounded well enough, you get holes in it, the air in it. So how many flavors do you have? You have prawn, fish, vegetarian one like yam, sweet potato, pumpkin, seaweed, mushroom. The fry, the pang hon ha, the jong. Si ha mi hon, ah, to chu hon. Lu mi hon yong measurement ah. Wo, aga aga. Lu e favorite flavor si ha mi. Wo lang si suka jia hu e. So until it's soft, pliable, but still wettish. And it might be a little bit. It's like being a baker. Yeah. Okay. Looking beautiful. So what kind of uh, prawn is this? Bundi. Sea prawns. Ah, uh, hi. So now you are rolling it to a specific thickness. Oh. I believe he had just graduated and I met him at somebody's house when he told me that he just graduated as a food scientist and I just thought, this is incredible. So I said, what are you doing now? And he says, well, I'm making jams for local produce. And I simply asked him, do you make acha? And he says, yes, of course. Great. We really would like to see how you make the acha, both the commercial way and the traditional way. Kevin, so these are the three that you had steamed and they're now ready to be cut. See, let it cool down. Yeah. After you steam, you can eat leng. Did your mother insist at the beginning before you use machine? Oh, I don't use machine now. So, it's a generation now. Yeah. I remember when I cut like that, my mother says, Moi jang, moi piong. In the past, we would put it on the rooftop. I'd climb up the ladder, take it down if there's rain. In the morning, climb up that ladder again, put it on the atap roof, let it sun for a few days. Then the magic happens when you deep fry it. This is your family collection of kopok. Can you tell us what was the first one? And then how did it progress to so many different types? Cha cha wai pa ma zhao shi gan shi zhao he gan pi ni. Ka wai gu gui ao gu man man yu la yu zhe lo. Gu ge zhi chao zhe mi ge a ho a chao yu vegetarian ne lang gong. I try so yi lang gong man man yan jiu. 
做基础性嘅 flavor 咯。比如我人熟嘅，我人有紫菜，一个小果，一个手竹，哦，番竹，哦，金瓜加番竹，啊，一两头头做就是了了很咩咯，用手咯，因为扎扎时间规则唔正是无 machine 嘛，因为一来 start about 四扎唔正。So at the beginning we did it start before the factory. 出来阿妹遐做。Are you still staying there? See, what can here? And you're going to bring us there later on. See, that would be wonderful. Madam Lin, who is the founder, she's gracious, and I asked her, "Is your name Madam Lin Bunting?" No, she said, "Bunting is my late husband." And then she tells me that she loved eating kopo, and that was how it started. So she decided to make it myself. That is how it started. In that kitchen, she started buying prawns, mixing it up, pounding it, trying it out, testing it with her family, friends. She said it took her about two years before she felt ready to make it commercial. She had this desire to concentrate on kopok. We know the rest of the story today. She comes. He sits there talking about her life. Okay. 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 ไปแล้วดิฉันได้จอบเดี๋ยวได้จอบเดี๋ยวอีหัดชีล่ะเต็นจุงเจ้าชีสิการอ๋อหลังกูขัดเฉลาะขัดเฉลาะตั้งหล
So next, we'll get salt. In terms of the ingredients, it can be from five ingredients to 20 ingredients. Basically, there's a frying of garlic, shallots, etc. So it's like making the base. Oh, the smell is unreal. It's starting to get crispy. How would you do a big portion? A big portion, usually, we get more oil. <laughs> It's almost like frying deep fried shallot. So with the same oil, you're going to fry this off. That's okay. why you get double the flavor. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. why you put quite a bit of oil. Yes, so you use correct. that, it's got that flavor and you're going to use it again. Turn it around. Make sure everything is coated with uh, oil. So I will have to cook until it reaches... You really want it dry. And that's how you can preserve all this. Right. It's basically from the sourness of vinegar, the dryness of whatever fresh produce you have. That's why we are throwing out the liquid and also using oil more than uh, what we usually do in stir fries and right. whatnot. So next, we can prepare the chili. So yeah. chili usually we remove the inner membrane and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. You just want the colour if you're not a spicy kind of person. So chili is for colour and spice. The heat is coming also from the chilli yes. paste. So what is the difference? They're the same ingredients. Because we are pounding, so injuring more of the cells, releasing more of sugars coming up, so we have more caramelization. They actually serve a purpose in it. Next one, this is caramelized ready. So next up, we're gonna saute in some candle nut, some turmeric, and a bit of chili paste. Right, so we we saute this. Now you see it's all mixed in already. Yeah. I know at this point it's not ready. It smells so good. Can I taste it? Sure, definitely yeah. go ahead. Right. I just want to taste the... The flavour is good, but... So good. We're going to add sugar. Don't be shy on the sugar. We need that sugar to balance out and for that caramelic flavour. Right, so right now... This is it. We're not done yet. We're going to get... Peanuts, these are toasted peanuts. Toasted ones. Everything in. The skin is actually the one that gives a bit more flavor. In. So once you have that in your vinegar, basically it make the whole thing more sour. The whole pickle can last for half a year, months, two years. And basically we squeeze it right overnight. And usually after drying, they would do some sun drying. So next one, we are basically going to blanch this dried cucumber into the acha pickle liquid with the application of heat. Cook it up. And you repeat basically until your dried cucumbers are blanching. Leave it to cool uh, over five, six hours. When we look at this kropo, acha, immediately we're thinking Sarawakian Chinese New Year. I'm trying to figure out how did this two meet? The original name, acha, is actually Hindustani. Incredible, isn't it? It's really Sarawak. We are represented between in acha. I only see this at Chinese New Year. My Chinese sister in law makes acha for Chinese New Year. Well, the Malays also do acha, but then I started eating achar with koroko during Chinese New Year. And then I bring achar back in my Malay home. After that, you start seeing people all eating achar with koroko during Hari Raya. The first thing you see koroko, you got achar. But then the West Malaysian find it a bit weird. Koroko is koroko. How come the achar comes around? The achar, they eat it with nasi biryani, nasi minyak. The Malays has two different types of achar. They call it achar hidup. It's like life. Yes. This is achar that they do immediately and they can serve it within the next four hours. They don't really preserve it. They just marinate it. And then you can eat it with a nasi minyak. Whereas this one is a very tedious one. Dry, squeeze off the water like a month before. Chinese New Year, you start doing achar. But how did we fall in love with this is another story. This is a 80-year-old plus Nyonya snacking plate. Here you go. Wow. You usually serve this a few days later. But this, it's really... Glad you like that. Mm. All the spices, the turmeric, the ginger, the garangal, it's all come through. 
Yeah. And it doesn't really taste sweet, sweet. Yes. Thank you, Melton. You're most welcome. Caught between the precision of his trade and his traditional Chinese method of doing acha, one thing they all agree on is that Chinese New Year without acha on Kuropok is no celebration at all. You taste every single ingredient, you know, and that's what is makes it so amazing. All right, so this. Justin, uh... <laughs> can you say your Chinese name again? Chen Pei Lan. Do you know it's incredible because I have the same name in Chinese. It's just one part that's different. My name is Chen Pei Yu. Wow, we could be sisters celebrating Sarawak way of eating grappa. And Aja. Salute. Salute. But I said, Madame Lim, are you happy with what you have achieved? <laughs> then she had this smile and she says, yes, I'm very happy because my children are carrying on the business that I started. In the end, four decades ago, it was a brilliant thought. Today, it still is. of 29 major groups. And as such, it is a real melting pot of boundless types of cuisines. No matter the indigenous group that we come from, our ancestors had planned that we would never be short, passing down traditional methods of preserving food to last until the next harvest.